violence. As you know, the Proud Boys, a despicable group which I have called on our government to consider designating as terrorists, are being charged with conspiracy for their role in the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. The Justice Department is also said to be considering sedition charges against members of the Oath Keepers, another dangerous militia group which was heavily involved in the attack on the Capitol. While I welcome these charges, I'm concerned that it's been very difficult to win convictions for these charges in the past, and the message that might be sent to would-be extremists in all of our states. Attorney General Nessel and Attorney General Ford, uh, if I can start with you with Attorney General Nessel first. In general, do you believe the legal tools currently available to federal, state, and local enforcement, uh, enforcement agencies are strong enough to deter potential extremists from engaging in domestic terror? General Nessel, you know, um, I'm interested in this idea that um, Canada has designated the Proud Boys as a terrorist organization. Um, uh, obviously, anyone from Michigan knows we spend a lot of time uh, separate from COVID uh, going to concerts and going to meals and, you know, visiting family and property over in, in Canada. Um, what, if any, conversations have you had with your Canadian um, colleagues, what does it mean if a member of the Proud Boys in Michigan decides that they want to go to Windsor for uh, a concert? Is there any discussion, legal discussion going on, on the implications of that designation by the Canadian government? Well, honestly, I haven't had those conversations with the Canadian government. Um, obviously, as we know, there are litany of things that are legal in uh, the state of Michigan, and as soon as you try to cross over, they won't allow you in, even for a drunk driving conviction. You can't, you cannot be admitted into the state of our state, so party the nation of Canada, if you have a drunk driving conviction. So, uh, you know, I imagine that there are repercussions in the event that we have individuals that identify with these groups that, um, that cross the border, but I don't know exactly uh, what those are, nor have I seen uh, examples of that. But if I can just very quickly go back to something you said a minute ago. If, if states are truly the principle for, you know, uh, for invention, and you can model the federal law and federal what the federal government does uh, after state law, I would just indicate, I understand all these concerns that people are indicating in terms of civil liberties related issues. I just again want to point to the fact that we have all these laws on the books in terms of gang affiliation, in terms of domestic terrorism in Michigan. We have a very diverse state. It's why I'm always arguing that we should have our primary start with Michigan instead of uh, Iowa. Um, or New Hampshire, because we are such a diverse state that is more reflective of the United States of America than many other states are, we simply haven't seen that in the state of Michigan. We have not seen, uh, you know, egregious violations of people's civil liberties and constitutional rights. So I'm not saying that it's not an important concern. I'm just saying in our state, we already have all these laws. They've been on the books for decades. We haven't had that situation. Thank you, Attorney General. I'll turn to uh, my fellow colleague from Michigan. We have a little bit of a Michigan mafia here. Um, uh, Mr. Meyer, please go ahead. No, uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I, I would um, strongly support Michigan being first in the nation as well. 